Hello lovers of literature. We have already done the first two scenes of Act 1 of March into Venice. And I'm quite assured by your feedback, comments, that you have really appreciated the explanation and you have quite well understood the core of the play. And you have also interpreted each character in your own way, which is quite appreci appreciable. Today, we are going to do the last scene that is remaining of Act 1. Now, this scene is very, very crucial. First, because it introduces Shylock, who serves as the antagonist of the play. So, Shylock is introduced as a Jew. First, this is his first introduction. And second, why is it crucially important, the scene? Because this scene serves an important dramatic angle to the later acts that is going to come up. So this scene, of course, brings in a lot more to Antonio's character as well. And as if Antonio and Shylock are pitted against each other, one seems to be the most greedy character and the other seems to be non-practical about finances and monetary affairs. So as if these two characters are just pitted against each other. So for this, for this understanding too, this scene is quite important. So Shakespeare has put up a situation in which a man has put his life in the hands of a moral enemy. This man is Antonio and the enemy is Shylock. That is whether or not Antonio's marching ships survive pirates in the high seas. Antonio and Shylock are diametrically opposites. Shylock is cunning, cautious, crafty. Whereas Antonio is easygoing, trusting, melancholic, romantic and naive. Shylock trusts only in the tangible, that is in the bond. Antonio trusts in the intangible, that is luck. Here Shylock seems almost paranoid and vengeful, but on the other hand, Antonio seems, as I've told you, completely ignorant and also overconfident, not being reasonable enough because he lacks in common sense. He doesn't understand the importance of risk taking and that he does for his friend. So his one way he is blinded by love and also by not looking into the reality. So this is how Shylock is presented in this scene. After having said that introductory note, what we will go do today is we will not waste much of our time and delve into the play. So it is also set in Venice. I told you Venice is the commercial capital in this play. And Belmont serves to be a place of romance, love, romance and love are quite same, romance, festivity, marriage and of course imagination. It's a dreamlike venture. And this is Venice, a public place. Enter Bassanio and Shylock. So Bassanio has come to Venice to see whether he can get some money, that is 3,000 ducats under Antonio's credentials. So that is why he has come here and he has come up to Shylock, the moneylender. So Shylock 
3,000 ducats? Oh well. Bassanio says, A sir, for three months. For three months? Well. For the which, as I told you, Antonio shall be bound. So, for three months, 3,000 ducats is wanted for. And for that, Antonio shall be the guarantor. Bound as guarantor. Well, Bassanio says, may you stead me? So that means, will you help me? Will you pleasure me? That means, will you oblige to my request? Shall I know your answer? So shall I know what you think of? Whether you will give me the money or not? 3,000 ducats for three months and Antonio bound. So Shylock is ruminating and brooding over the conjecture of the prospect of lending the money. Your answer to that. So Bassanio says, yes, that is what the context is. So what is your answer to that? Now Shylock says, quite sarcastically, Antonio is a good man. So yes, I understand as you tell me, Antonio is a good man. But he thinks something quite different of Antonio. Bassanio, have you heard an imputation to the contrary? So is there any imputation? That means, is there any allegation to what I have stated that Antonio is a good man? Oh, no, 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 no. Now he just denies. But, of course, he shares no kind of amicability with Antonio. He just share all that vengeance wrath for Antonio. There are reasons for that. First, he is a Christian. And second, Antonio lends money without taking any interest that hampers Shylock's business. Because Shylock is a money lender. So if Antonio lends out money without taking any interest, of course, Shylock's business will be at stake. That is the reason. That Those are two very important reasons. So, oh, no, no, no. My meaning in saying he's a good man is to have you understand me that he is sufficient. So, I understand as he's a good man, he being a guarantor is quite sufficient on the fact that I can give you the money as a loan. Yet his means are in supposition, but his wealth are, of course, under question. He had an Argosy bound to Tripolis. So Argosy means big merchant ship. So he has a big ship that is selling for Tripolis. Please note the places which is important from exam point of view. So one is bound to Tripolis. Another to the Indus. I understand. Moreover, up in the Rialto, so I have learned from the Rialto, Rialto is a stock exchange, that he had a third at Mexico. So there is another which is at Mexico. And he has another fourth for England. And other ventures he had squandered abroad. And the other investments that he has are also scattered here and there. So nothing is at hand. Why is he telling that? Because Antonio's prospects are just far-fetched. It's nothing for real, nothing for tangible. Then he says, but ships are but boards. So you cannot trust on ships because those are just boards. Sellers but men and sellers are just but men. There be land rats, that is thieves, water rats, that is pirates, water thieves, that is dangers of water, and land thieves, that is dangers in land, that is weans, and rocks. I mean pirates, and there is the peril of water, weans, and rocks. So of course, there are different other dangers that a ship might face in the ocean. 
so nothing is guaranteed whether the ships will ship will come back with the amount of money that has been invested into it the man is not withstanding sufficient so antonio in spite of this is still a sufficient guarantor so he says that i think i may take his bond so i think okay fine for 3000 ducats i will consider this bond be assured you may so please rest assured i will be assured i may and that i may be assured so i'll be assured that i may and in order to be assured i will bethink me so i will have to think this over may i speak with antonio so can i have a word with antonio if it please you to dine with us so here bassanio gives an invitation of dinner to shylock but what does shylock say which is quite important these lines yes to smell pork to eat of the habitation which you prefer the nazarite conjured the devil into i will buy with you sell with you talk with you walk with you and so following but i will not eat with you drink with you nor pray with you what news on the rialto who is he comes here so why these lines are very important because it shows shylock's like shylock is quite aloof not to share the private space with the christians so the christians they just eat pork which is a meat that is forbidden to the jews so to smell pork to eat of the habitation which he prefet the nazarite conjured the devil into so i cannot smell pork to eat the meat of that animal which your prophet that is a jesus of nazareth sent the devil into so it was considered the devil was sent into the body of a pig so should i have the devil that is instilled in a pig's body so he says i will buy with you the twins i will conduct business with you people i will sell with you of course a transaction i'll talk with you of course i'll have conversation with you i will walk with you even i will walk down the streets with you people and other things but i will never share the same space of eating with you drinking with you and even i will not pray with you because our religion and our beliefs are separated then she asks uh, sorry then he asks what news in the rialto who is he comes here so who is there who comes and antonio this is agnia antonio shylock aside now what is this aside aside is when shylock is talking just not to make bassanio and antonio antonio hear what he is saying it is just between the audience or the readers and shylock so this aside gives us a further vent into shylock's character and helps the audience to understand him better and of course a more about his inner nature so with this this asides are always very important in any kind of drama how like a fawning publician he looks so fawning publician so he looks like a flattering roman tax collector i hate him for he's a christian now this speech is very important because he openly states that he hates him because he's a christian for the very first time we come to know the vengeance that shylock shares for antonio but more so i hate him number one reason he is a christian but even the more for that in low simplicity but more so because in his base simplicity he lends out money gratis that is he lends out money for free and brings down the rate of usance here with us in vents 
that is how he brings down the rate of interest for us here in Venice. If I can catch him once upon the hip, that means if I once catch him upon a disadvantageous position, I will feed fat the ancient crutch. So I will satisfy my old resentment that is grudge. I bear him. I have for him. He hates our sacred nation. So he hates our Jewish race. And he rails, that is, he abuses even there when merchants most congregate. That means even he abuses me publicly where merchants gather, that is, at the riot or the stock exchange. On me, my bargains and my well-known thrift. So he shows open abuse or open rebuke at my deals, at my business, at my hard-earned profit, well-worn thrift, that is hard-earned profit, which he calls interest. So he calls that interest. Cursed be my tribe if I forgive him. So the fire of revenge is burning in blaze in his heart. So he says, if I ever forgive him, then may, may I be cursed along with my race. Bassanio says, Shylock, do you hear? Shylock says, I'm debating of my present store. So I'm just calculating on what money do I have. And by the near case of my memory. So I'm guessing by my memory. I cannot instantly raise up the cross of full 3000 ducats. So immediately it is not quite possible for me to raise the sum of 3000 ducats. What of that? So what of that? What do I do of that? I was just calculating on that. But we know that he was not thinking of that. Rather, he was completely condemning Antonio. So he says, what of that? Tubal, a wealthy Hebrew of my tribe. So who is Tubal? I told you in the first introductory scene that is Act 1. Scene one, but Tubal is another Jew that we have in this play, and he's a, he's an acquaintance and a friend, a confidant to uh, Shylock. So Tubal, a wealthy Hebrew of my tribe, will furnish me. So I'll take the amount from Tubal, but soft, soft means, but hold on for a little time. How many months do you desire? So how many months do you desire for? He says this to Antonio. To Antonio means says this words to Antonio. Rest you fear, good Signia. So, greetings, good Signia. Now for the very first time, as if he takes notice of Antonio. But we know he has already taken notice of Antonio quite before and how he has openly abused him. Rest you fear, good Signor. Your worship was the last man in our mouths. So, your worship was the last man in our mouths means we were just talking about you. Your worship means your name. The last man in our mouths means you are the last man we were talking about. We here refers to Bassanio and he himself. So, Antonio says, Shylock. Albert, I neither lend nor borrow by taking nor by giving of excess. So Shylock, although I neither lend nor borrow by taking or leaving interest. So he never lends with taking interest. Yet to supply the ripe wants of my friend, I'll break a custom. But as my friend needs the money urgently, ripe wants means urgent need. I will break custom, so I will just break a habit. Now he says this to Bassanio, is he yet possessed how much he would? So does he know how much amount do you want? 
AA 3000 ducats and for three months. I had forgot three months, you told me so. So I had forgotten, you told me so. Oh, well then, your bond, let me see, but hear you. Methought you said you neither lend nor borrow up an advantage. So, well then, your bond, let me see, but hear me first. I think you said you neither borrow nor lend up an interest. I do never use it, so I never do that. Shylock now tries to give counter arguments the fact that why does he take interest? So this is an allusion where he refers to stories about Jacob in the book of Genesis. This Jacob from a holy Abraham was as his wise mother wrought in his behalf. The third possessor, A, he was the third. So he refers, the first story, he refers to chapter 25 and 27, tells how Jacob was aided by his mother Rebekah to succeed his father Isaac to the family estates, elbowing his elder brother Esau out of the way. This way he became the third in the line, that is the third possessor after Abraham, that is a founder of the Jewish race. And what of him? Did he take interest? No, not take interest, not as you would say. So he did not take interest that way. But directly interest, mark what Jacob did. Now another story. Well, abandoned himself or compromised that all the inlings which were strict and pied should fall as Jacob's hire. This was a way to thrive when he was blessed and thrift is blessing if men still it not. Very important. So, the third possessor I've told you. Now, after Abraham, that is the founder of the Jewish race and his grandfather and Isaac's Abraham's son and his father. Now, the second story tells of Jacob's trick with Laban's sheep, whereby all of Laban's sheep were appropriated by Jacob. So what he did was, what Jacob did was, Laban and he agreed that all newborn lambs with striped or spotted fleece would be Jacob's share. This was a way of gaining profit and he was blessed. So he directly did not take away the control of the sheep. What he did was he told that the sheep which will just be spotted, I will have possession of those sheep. So in a way, he is indirectly trying to claim the sheep without directly trying to capture or steal it. So he says this is a thrift. This is not a stealing. This is just a, just a way of gaining profit. And this is fine as long as men do not steal it. So these stories or these allusions are quite important from exam point of view, I mean. This was a venture, sir, that Jacob served for, a thing not in his power to bring to pass, but swayed and fashioned by the hand of heaven. So, sir, this was a venture for which Jacob worked as a servant. It was not a thing that he could cause on his own. Instead, God shaped and controlled it for him. Was this inserted to make interest good or is it your gold and silver you ease and ram? So he tries to reason out and tell that was the story justified enough for your interest? Are your gold and silver equal to rams and UVs? I cannot tell. I make it breed as fast but not missing near. So I do not know the difference. I make money. Multiply as fast as EV and rams breed. So I, it is just money and I want to multiply it. But just hear me out, Signia. Mark you this Bassanio, devil. Now this lines show the open contempt of Antonio for Shylock too. Mark you this Bassanio, devil can cite scripture for his purpose. Important line. This talks about that how the devil can cite 
sacred sources from the scripture for his own purpose. So as if he alters the scriptures. An evil soul producing holy witness is like a villain with a smiling cheek. So an evil soul that uses holy arguments is like a villain with a smiling face. So that is first he refers to Shylock as devil. And then he says that he is an evil soul. And then he is an evil man with a smiling cheek. And next a goodly apple rotten at the heart. And then he is an apple which is completely rotten at the heart. So he has a rotten heart. Oh, what a goodly outside falsehood has. So what an attractive appearance falsehood has. And this last line is an ap apostrophe. 3,000 ducats. It's a good round sum. Three months from 12. So three months from 12, the date. 3,000 ducats. It's a good round sum. Three months from 12. Then let me see the rate. So let me see what the rate is. Well, Shylock, shall we be beholding to you? So, well, Shylock, are you going to lend us the money or not? Signe Antonio, many a time now. Again, Shylock tries to show his upper hand and he gives an entire speech where he tries to tell Antonio that why should he lend the money? Why? So this speech that follows is very important. Be, be attentive. Signia Antonio, many a time and oft in the Rialto you have rated me. So many a times you have often rated me means abused me in Rialto as a stock exchange. About, excuse me, about my monies and my usances. About my money lending deals in Rialto. Still, I have, I, have I borne it with a patient shrug? Yet I have always endured it. It shows that how Shylock is scorned up by the Christians. And it talks, it, for the very first time, we see Shylock being a prey to Christian faith. For sufferance is a badge of all our tribe. Why have I suffered? Because the Jews are known for tolerance you call me misbeliever so you call me a non-believer cut throat dog you call me merciless and spit upon my jewish cabotine and you have even spit you have even spat sorry spat on my jewish cloak cabotine he refers to cloak and all for use of that which is mine own and you have done this all for using what is my own. It is, it's my money. Whether I put it in interest or not, it's my business. Well then, it now appears you need my help. So now, the situation is as such. Do you have come here and you need my help? Whom you have abused so much? Go to them. You come to me and you say, so you, you just come here and you come to me and you say, Shylock, we would have monies. So you say, Shylock, we want money. You say so. You that did void your room up on my beard. You, you are the same person who spat on my beard. And foot me as you spawn a stranger car. And you kicked me as you would kick a stray dog out of the door. Over your threshold that is out of the door. Money is, is your suit. So does a dog have money? So does it suit that a dog has a money? You've called me a dog. That's why he said, says money is, is your suit. What should I say to you? So what will my answer be? Should I not say, hath a dog money? Should a dog be like, is it, is it possible that a dog has money? Is it possible a car can lend 3,000 ducats? Is it possible for a dog to lend 3,000 ducats? Shall I bend low? Should I go low? And in a bondman's key, with bated breath and whispering humbleness, say this. 
So she died for low and in a slave's voice, anxiously and in humil humility, whispering, "Say this, fear, sir, you spit on me on Wednesday last. So you had spat on me on Wednesday last. You spawned me such a day. You rejected me on one such day. Another time you called me a dog. So you have called me a dog in some other time." And for these courtesies and for these acts of politeness, I will lend you thus much monies. So I will lend you so much amount of money. So what should my answer be? Antonio says, I am as like to call thee so again. So unabashedly, Antonio says, I am likely to call you the same again. To spit on thee again, to spit on you again. To spawn the two and push you away too. If thou wilt lend this money, lend it not as to thy friends. So if you lend me this money, lend it not as if you would be your friend to me. So we are not ever friends. So he makes it clear. For when did friendship take a breed for barren metal of his friend? So for when did a friend charge interest on a loan? So please charge interest. So a breed for barren metal, that is, which is bred by a sterile metal. Here, barren metal means money, that is interest. But lend it rather to thine enemy, but lend it as if I am your enemy, who if break, thou mayest, with better face, exact the penalty. So who, if he fails to repay, you may extract the penalty without being guilty. Why look you how you stop? Now Shylock tries to bring them into his confidence because he has a graver motive which we, come, which we will come to know later. So he says, oh, are you, why are you so angry? I would be friends with you and, ha and have your love. So I'm ready to be your friend and have your love. Forget the shames that you have sent me with and I'm ready to forget the insults that you have just bestowed upon me. Supply your present wants and take no doubt. So I'm obliged that I can, of course, give your present needs and I, sh I even do not want to charge in a doubt. Doubt is a tiny bit. Doubt here actually refers to a Dutch coin, which is of a small denomination. So, without much of usance for my monies and charge no interest for my money, and you will not hear me, this is kind on I offer. So, you will not listen to me. Just don't listen to me. It is a kindness that I really offer. Asanyo says, this were kindness. So, that is very kind of you. This kindness will I show. Now, see, I told you there is a graver motive. Now, this is what he says. This kindness will I show. Of course, I'll be very kind to you. But go with me to a notary. Sell me there. Let's go to a notary, to a solicitor. And you can sign on a simple bond there. A single bond. And then in merry sport, then merry sport is a joke. If you repay me not on such a day. So as a joke, if you just fail to repay me, in such a place, such sums or sums as are expressed in the condition. So if you fail to repay me the sum, the amount of money on that very day that is expressed in the bond, let the forfeit, so let the penalty be nominated. Please, very important note here. What is the penalty? For an equal pound of your fair flesh. So a fair flesh, fair means... A pound of your Christian flesh will be cut off and taken in what part of your body pleaseth me. From whithsoever part of the body I please, I just want to extract a pound of flesh. So Shylock just does it very manipulatively and he names this entire scheme to be a merry sport, which is not. Content in faith, I will seal to such a bond. So Antonio says, okay, fine, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm contented enough. 
and say there is much kindness in the Jew and I am going to say that you are much kind. But Bassanio warns him and tells him, you shall not seal to such a bond for me. You will not agree to such kind of bond for me. I would rather dwell in my necessity. So I will rather live in my need. I don't care. Why fear not, man? So Antonio assures him and says not to be scared. I will not forfeit it. I will not forfeit such a bond. So I will, not, I will just not default on the loan. Within these two months, so within two months, that's a month before the bond expires. So they've got three months. So Antonio says before one month, that is within two months, I do expect return of thrice three times the value of this bond. So I expect to earn nine times of the value of this bond, that is a, of 3,000 to cats. Oh, Father Abraham, what does Christians are? So as if Shylock just uh, acts a little smarter and says, Oh, Father Abraham, what kind of people are these Christians whose own hard dealings teach them suspect the thoughts of others? So their hard dealings, the tough dealings have tell, told them, taught them to be hard with people who does favor to them? Pray you tell me this. If he should break his day, what should I gain by the exaction of the forfeiture? So please tell me, if I just have a pound of a flesh from a human body, what will I earn by it? So of course he's, try, he's trying to give arguments quite in favor of his bond. Just to be an evil with a smiling cheek that he is. So he says, Pray you, tell me this. If he should break his day, what should I gain by the exaction of this forfeiture? Pound of man's flesh taken from a man is not so estimable. It's not even like it's not even a, a fact of a gain. Profitable neither. It's not even valuable neither profitable. As flesh of muttons, beefs or goats. So flesh of animals are more profitable than human flesh because they cannot sell it. I say to buy his favor, I extend this friendship. So I offer this friendship because I want to be on the better side of Antonio. If you will take it so, if not, adieu. So if you just accept this friendship, all right. And if you do not, then goodbye. And for my love, I pray you wrong me not. But I request you not to be unkind to me for this offer of love. Yes, Shylock, I'll still unto this point. So Antonio agrees. So I told you, Antonio did not see the practical side. If suppose he cannot return the money, then what happens? Antonio's life is at stake, isn't it? Because of course, no one can survive after giving away a flesh from any part of the body. Then meet me forthwith at the notaries and meet me soon at the solicitor's office. Give him direction for this merry bond. So give him instructions for drawing up this joke of a bond. So it's a merry bond. I told you, it's, he, he, told, he has said that it's a merry bond, it's a merry sport. And I will go and purse the ducat's rate. So I will go and collect the money. Horsemen shall collect the money. See to my house left in the fearful god of an unthrifty knave. So I just need to go and check my house, which I have left in the dubious charge of a careless servant. So it also shows how Shylock is all the time scared and how he wants to covet money. Money for Shylock is the prime most important thing. These line is very important to know more about Shylock because he goes on checking his house. And presently I'll be with you. So and I'll be with you. Hi, the gentle Jew. So, okay. Hurry up, gentle Jew. Exit Shylock. The Hebrew will turn Christian. He grows kind. So he says, Antonio, so I, I, I fear that this Jew will turn Christian as if he wants to tell that how Jews are unkind creatures and how Christians are kind. So they're comes a complete disbelief in the religion of the Jews. 
I lock I like not fear terms in a villain's mind. So Bassanio suspects and says, I don't like the kind words of a man who has a villain's mind. Come on, in this there can be no dismay. So come on, there is nothing fear to be feared. My ships home a month before the day. My ships will return a month before the agreed date on the bond. So here comes the end of the scene of Act 1 and also the Act 2. That is the Act 1. Now, what is quite important after we have read the scene, let us do a quick critical appreciation of the scene. Okay. So the critical appreciation is of the scene. First, I told you it's quite important because it is an expository scene where Shylock is introduced. And of course, the dramatic purpose the scene serves to the entire drama. So Shylock is first. We see Shylock enters first. Then Bassanio is following him, trying to get an answer to his request for the money. And then he says, well, three months. Well, he goes on pondering Shylock, whether he would give the money or not, because he was just trying to make up a scheme in his head. Then he thinks over and tells, okay, I need to have a word with Antonio. And when Antonio comes over, then what happens? He scorns at Antonio. And that also not openly. But in contrast, if you see, Antonio has openly, like, contempt, openly showed his contempt towards Shylock, which Shylock doesn't do. So it shows that how Shylock is an evil with a smiling good cheek. And then he goes on telling uh, to him that how could he ask money from Shylock as if he tries to show who is at a better position. He tries to, Shylock tries to show his power up in Antonio. And then again he changes and he tells, okay, okay, I'm ready to give the money, but... Remember, I just need a merry game to be done with this penalty. And that is that I can extract a part of flesh from your body. Which Antonio, being not careful, did not pay notice. And therefore, the fate that Antonio will eventually come across in the later acts is a cause of his own stupidity so there is nothing to complain Antonio cannot complain so in a way Antonio gets our attention or mercy in the later acts but to be remembered Antonio is the one who steps into this problem into this peril so having said that I end today's video because of course I hope that this is well explained and please, if you have understood the play and my explanation, please give a thumbs up or the like to the video. Because your likes gives me a lot of support. And I feel better to do more videos for you people. Because you need to understand that your likes mean that whatever I'm offering in my channel is what you like for. And please put in your comments, your doubts, your queries, your suggestions, your comments. And please, even if you have liked it, please put it down. And also, why you have liked it, which is very important. You just cannot just blindly go and like someone thing, right? There are reasons. Maybe I've explained well. Maybe you have understood that part well or this part not quite well. So please put in. And I always tell you that I will come up with your queries in the next video. So that is how we end today's lecture. Please do the following as I have told you. Stay blessed. Stay happy. Thank you. Read in between the lines. Take care.